Hello, good morning, and welcome to another video. And this is a slightly different beginning to what we normally have, where we start at the beginning of a project and we kind of introduce it, tell you what we're gonna do. Whereas today, I'm actually sitting on the end of a project. Although, as we will discuss a little bit later, this is not the end of this project. But behind me, you can see a wonderful new subfloor, and that is what we are gonna install in this video. And then we're gonna tell you what's wrong with it. The time has come to deal with this. We've taken some time, we've got some advice, and the conversation we had with our building consultant friend was very similar to the other conversation we had about the previous time we had to fix a big hole in the floor, which was, there's basically two ways that we can go with this. We could either do something like a block and beam or poured concrete floor, or we can do something very similar to what was already there in wood. Can you guess which one we chose? And so the short version of this whole story is we've got some rotten joists that need to be fixed. And we're gonna have a two-pronged strategy to do that. We're going to repair some and we're going to replace some. First up, we're gonna remove the stuff that needs to be removed. And these two joists under here, one and two, that run across the stone wall kind of in the middle there and go directly under the front door uh, definitely have to come out. One of these has no contact with the wall plate at the doorway and one has like a tiny little section uh, and the timbers that we've got are higher than these ones so they should fit perfectly for the height for the subfloor that's our hope. Um, so it's kind of doing two things at once it's repairing the joists by replacing them and getting the correct height for the subfloor. So those two are going to come out. The only complication with that is the bathroom wall that we built downstairs is screwed into those joists. Um, the the, the top, top plate, wall plate on this one is screwed into it. So we're going to remove this temporary board, take it out. Then we're going to saw on either side of this wall and then we can lift this side and lift that side and then we'll unscrew those blocks from the top of the wall and then we'll have this big space to also be able to work from underneath with some more ladders. Um, so that's the first thing that we're going to do. It will also then allow us to have a bit closer look at the wall plate which also has to be removed which we're hoping will be the next step. It's moving, you got it? Yeah. Okay. Yep, got, got, it. Go. got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it, 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 Good news is, two joists are out. That's a nice, that's crazy. I mean, only this much of it on the end was damaged, which means the rest of it can be repurposed for something after all the crazy nails are removed. And now we need to go and address the wall plate. So which part are we gonna to plan to remove or try and remove? From the inside of this one, all the way as far as we can get under that one. And it may not be clear, but this wall plate isn't bearing all the weight of these joists. This wall plate sits directly on a big uh, concrete lintel. I know ideally you wouldn't want to cut into a wall plate and put a small piece back in, but it has a big big lintel underneath it so it's not taking all the weight of it. It's not the only thing taking the weight. Exactly and so as long as we can put the noggins in to stop any twistment and twistment? Twisting? Twistment is a new word. <laughs> I'm very tired. Uh, to stop any twisting and movement then the new wall plate on the existing lintel with noggins to prevent the turn. We're going to do a little bit more repair work on that one. Backfill under this one then we should be good to go. 
I prefer twist mint. <laughs> that is good. That is how much that will play is left. But look at that cool prettiness. Oh wow. I didn't need that. <laughs> Got it. That's much better. That's loose. Okay, so it's just I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a bit at the back. But, <laughs> how so much is that? It's like a, we just need to take like a blade's width off. We might just be able to bash it in. Should have, should have done like 110 like you suggested. <sighs> and then just notched a bit more. Sorry, I was making too much noise. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> that uh, should have done what you said. Uh, I, you got it right and I made a mistake. happen at least once in your life, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. It is a new day and I'm just mixing up a bunch of lime for some of the work that we've got planned today. It is Saturday morning and our plan for today is to try and get in everything that requires some kind of bedding in on mortar so that tomorrow hopefully we can have a day off and we can at least let things set up overnight and for the next day or so. And so that means installing the wall plate which we're going to make some small modifications to and installing a joist which needs to be recessed into a stone wall. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
try and go... Can we get it up onto here, do you think, and then we can lower it down? Yes, we can try that. Exactly. Now, can you check the measurement again? Mm -hmm. Close enough. gaps where the line can go. Yes. Because this is... So yeah, it's fairly obvious the high point is where we don't want much line. Did you pass me the water sprayer? Welcome to day three on the putting a floor back project. I think this is going to be the last day of dealing with the joist material. And then I think tomorrow we should be able to come and put the new OSB down on top. Just thinking. These two joists are fine. This one has what I would put, say is on the edge of having the right amount of overlap on the wall plate at that end. It's sturdy, it's not moving. These are big, thick hardwood timbers. But because it's right on that edge of comfortableness, we're gonna stick another piece of timber and we're not gonna call it sistering because we're not gonna glue it because the sides are too difficult, but we are going to attach it. But it is gonna rest on the wall plate at that end and the stone wall on this end we won't be putting the floor on it, the floor will go on to this one, um, but we're just putting it there for a bit of peace of mind. It's not like a backup plan. And then we have three joists that are going in this gap. The other reason we want the insurance here is this is gonna be the landing for the staircase, so really want it to be pretty solid. Um, we'll also put in a load of noggins across this way, um, again, just to give added structure. But these are 80-year-old chestnut beams, they are super hard. They're so hard you can't pull the old nails out of them, which is why we angle grind them out. Um, so I have no hesitation believing these two beams are absolutely fine. But since we're here, we're just going to add some insurance. This again, 200, 300, something. Yeah, as, as much as we can. can get it onto that wall plate. Yeah, that'd be great if we could do that. Cool. So 340. Okay. And next one. I think they're all going to be the same, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, or is the wall plate? No, it's all the same. Yeah. Okay, angle. Have you 
want it. Have you got it? Yeah. Okay. Going up. Right, I'm going to drop off this floor in a minute. Okay. You got it? Okay. Got it in? Yep. Okay. Good. So, from the top of this joist to yep. the laser level line, will be an offset of seven. It is three and a half. So, three and a half has to come off. So, it drops down and then there's seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pull it. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. You need to go down here to receive. Yeah, I'm going to go and do that. I'm ready to receive. All in. Okay. Got it. Oh, no, no. Okay. Let's put it on the floor. Okay. Cool. Okay. Good. Okay now. Get it in. It's in. No, it's not, is it? It is. All the way down? No, not all the no. way down. It needs to push. Push where? Push that way. Okay, but it needs to go up to, to in order for me to push. I don't have to push against the floor. Oh. Yeah, there. And then you can yeah, slide yeah. it in there. Yeah. Have you got your mallet? No. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We're hoping it's going to sit on the wall plate. Yeah. Without so, any notching. So you see this? Yeah. The spirit levels at the top, which means it's seven centimeters out. Yeah. And it's Yours. not on the wall plate over here. It's also out by three and a half. So we might have to notch three, three and, and a half, half on that end. Yeah. And then it'll sit nicely. That's the plan. Seven centimeters. In which case, we're also going to have to notch it across this wall. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, we're not taking the wall down. Oh. It is much cooler in here. Mm. Just watch out for my fingers. Watching. Well, not really, but sort of. Okay, that is as far back as we can go. Ugh, we were off by. <laughs> Oh, maybe I can just notch out the wall plate a bit easier and take it down. Okay. Seems way too. I guess it hasn't dropped enough. Has yours dropped enough? Yep. Really? Yep. Doesn't go much more than that. Exactly on seven there. 6.9. Should we say that's good enough? Yes. So. I mean, it's quite amazing. I can't believe we got that in the first go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can only take my job. <laughs> <I'm such a laughs> <good. sighs> what you lovely people don't realise is that every single one of these attempts when we turn the camera on, and I don't even know if we turn the camera on for all of them, was over a 20 minute recording. So, it has taken some time. <laughs> Many hours. But we are in, I think. Yeah, so that one's in. Good. Happy? Uh, 
Call that done. It is definitely not perfect, but sometimes done is better than perfect. Perfect is nice sometimes, but today we're going to go with done. It was an absolute <laughs> of a project. <laughs> uh, it doesn't come across on camera, I'm sure, but it is so fiddly and very awkward and heavy and tiring. Sorry for all the moaning but sometimes that's the reality. And we like to show the reality. But it's done for now, and that means that we can move on to something else tomorrow, which will be a welcome change. That's all I have to say. See you later. So you know how I just said, done is better than perfect? Turns out that is not correct in this case. And it also turns out that we are not done. We've been doing some thinking and the short version is we're gonna have to rip all this out and do it again. And Kylie is gonna explain the massive mistake that we made during this project. Everyone likes a really good do, undo, redo, right? Apart from me. <laughs> Apart from me. <laughs> so let's explain the lessons learned first and then I'll explain what we did. The lessons learned are get more sleep when you're doing critical projects. The second lesson is listen to your gut. There was a point in this project where we went, this doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like we should be doing this. But because we were so tired and on quite a tight deadline we would just we just kept going we didn't stop and actually think we just like ah, I'll be fine and cracked on and the third thing is we've been beating ourselves up once we realized what the mistake was and what we should have done beating ourselves up I'm like oh my god we were so stupid you only learn by doing it what the potential mistakes are and what the right solutions are unless and, you're experienced and, unless yeah as a, as a DIYer who's doing most things for the first time and not experienced and not a professional, you have to allow yourself to make mistakes. And unfortunately, this mistake is quite significant and it means quite a lot of undoing and redoing. And we've had many discussions about this. Can we do this instead? Can we do that instead? And it's like, no, no, we're trying to do the right thing so that this house doesn't need any more work or just cosmetic work at least for the next 40, 50, however many years, beyond our lifetime. So we definitely have to undo and redo, and we have to allow ourselves to not beat ourselves up, to acknowledge that we are learning and just get it right the second time, hopefully. And I think another lesson here is that sometimes you can do something and learn from it and just move on, and the thing that you've done may not be perfect or may not be ideal, but it's okay and it's good enough. But sometimes the right thing to do is to do it again and to do it better. So why are we having to do this? Maybe you already noticed the mistake 
halfway through the video. Maybe you've been shouting at your screen or furiously writing in the comments. Um, maybe we made other mistakes that we aren't aware of yet and we'll learn those when we read your comments. But let's talk about the big issue with how we installed these joists. So I think it's easiest if we go downstairs because a picture is worth a thousand words and it's a really simple... Now that we know what we should have done, it's like, why, just we, why, do we, why do we not just think of that? Anyway, let's go and have a look. So here's a clue. Because we had this wall already here, we didn't want to take it down and rebuild it. And the joist material that we're using is much taller than the original joists. And so when we realized that that would make the floor way too high, we were like, oh, well, we'll just take a notch out. And we notched out from the beams. And that's not good because... We've essentially weakened the beams. Yeah. And what's crazy is at the time we were like, oh, it's only 25% of the beam. Um, but it's right in the middle of each one. And what we should have done is just notched out the wall because it's not a supporting wall, it's just a stud wall. And then slid the joists into those notches, which is what we will do on the second time. Yes, this is probably the biggest mistake we have made on this project so far. I mean, you may disagree. You may think we've made tons of other massive mistakes as well. But I think this is, this is the one that is significant. And if we leave it like this, we would know we were leaving something that was really not correct and not how it should be. And it's just one of those things where you, you're looking at the solution of, I need to get this joist in place and have it at the right level. You, you're not looking at something else, particularly when you're on a time crunch and very tired. So well done to anyone who picked up on this earlier. <laughs> um, you're smarter than we are, but we are smart enough to know that it's worth redoing. The good news is we don't need to redo everything. We're just going to replace the three joists that we notched out across this wall. We have all the OSB ready and cut. We have all the other joists packed and ready to receive that new OSB. The only thing that is going to be a bit tricky is removing the now very securely nailed in place new joists. Um, so we're probably just going to have to saw them in a few places add the add the timber to the scrap pile and find something else to to use it for in the future so that is going to happen in a future video because we need to move on to something else the excellent news is for now this is all safe and we can walk on it we can get back into our house um, it's not good for the long term so we will be replacing it but it means that for now we can move on to other more critical things to prepare for our heat pump installation and so that is what we're going to be working on in the next video. So as you can imagine we're not feeling great right now and we're still very tired and the prospect of more work is not filling us with joy but we will get our mojo back and we will press on and something else exciting will happen next time I'm sure. So that's it for this video we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye!